Basically, um, I, what I was saying is I used to have Sudafed, Mucinex, um, Advil, Polysporin, Neosporin, um, uh, Pepto-Bismol. And um, when I discovered the oils, I discovered safer alternatives to them and with fewer side effects. And so literally now I have an oil that kind of replaced every one of those things. And I go through the oils, but I'll go into the next page and show you just a couple of them. So digest then. Um, and I wanna read these uh, ingredients because coriander tarragon, peppermint ginger, caraway and fennel, and aniseed. That's what's in Digestin. So these are all herbs, but if I try to take the herbal, um, the herbal portions of this, I would have to use tons and tons of the herbs. So Digestin is actually in a bottle, and I actually rub the Digestin on my belly. My whole family uses it, and it does take care of most of my stomach aches. Now, I told you I don't take them internally because I don't make my own blend of digestive um, zen, but doTERRA makes a safe digest zen in, um, in a caplet that is enterically coated, so it makes its way down to your stomach as well as a chewable. So again, I will buy some of their pre-made um, digestive blends and other blends as long as I'm not formulating the, um, the internal oils myself or just putting it in water, which I see a lot of people do. Um, I use the deep blue, but again, look at the products and any one of these products, this is what's so interesting. Wintergreen, camphor, peppermint, blue tansy, German chamomile, heliochrysanthemum, osmanthus are all oils that you could use separately. You could go out and purchase these oils, um, mix them and make your own blend of some sort of um, daily ache and pain oil. I mean, literally we rub this on ourselves several times a day, both of us. Now, frankincense is my absolute go-to for literally everything, for headaches, um, and frankincense is one of the few oils that I don't dilute. I actually will put a drop on my finger and I will just rub it right here on my temples or on the back of my neck. Um, I also put it directly on scars. Um, after I had surgery, I used frankincense to help with my scarring. I actually made a blend. I used frankincense, I used basil, I used lemon, and um, I actually put that in castor oil because castor oil will go deeper into your skin. And for um, several months after I had surgery, I was rubbing that on my... Um, on my scars. And, and the next one is clove. Now, <laughs> clove is kind of a, an amazing one, in my opinion, because of its ability to help with toothaches. I was just um, speaking with my mother-in-law recently. She's 89 years old, and she's been having a terrible toothache. So I put a care package together and sent her out clove because um, it's a safer way to um, not only get rid of the pain, it, du it dulls the pain, but then it also starts to help the infection, which underneath the tooth. Clove does need to be mixed with another oil, um, like a coconut oil. Um, you could even put it in olive oil, something that would be safe to be put in your mouth. So you would do, a a little bit of olive oil, and then about three to five drops of clove oil in there. Um, <laughs> I picked out this picture just because this is the way I sometimes feel. So I've actually, um, through the Aroma Head Institute, which I was telling you about, I've actually um, put together a lot of blends for different things. So this is my headache blend these days. It does have five drops of frankincense in it. 
I have four drops of lavender. Now lavender is calming um, and then frankincense, it crosses the blood brain barrier. So oftentimes a headache is a result of tension. So that's where the lavender comes in. The sweet basil has a completely different um, pass passage through your body it's working on. And Roman chamomile, like lavender, can be very calming, but with a different chemical component. And then this one I do mix with jojoba oil. Jojoba oil is a great um, oil to mix with a lot of the essential oils because everything mixes pretty easily in there and because it's very gentle for almost all skin types. So, um, so this is, you know, probably one of the, the biggest issues that I've started getting concerned about all the um, in ingredients in our skincare, in what we shower with, in what we wash our hands with. And um, there's not an awful lot of regulation over what is put into these products. And they can get away with some really generic terms like the term fragrance. Fragrance can mean anything. And the way they've gotten away with that is they have, um, they're, co they're convincing um, the government that that would give up their trade secret if they actually put, if they wrote what they put in there. But really in a lot of time, a lot of ways and a lot of times it's hiding some of the toxic chemicals. So we've got to end up being detectives, unfortunately. And so um, that means you got to learn how to read labels. And so I'm going to go over a couple of these things and just tell you how bad they are. Well, obviously, we all know how bad heavy metals are. <laughs> um, but we don't often know where he when heavy metals are making it into our, um, into our products. This is a big problem for women and lipstick. And um, there are a lot of heavy metals in, um, in lipsticks. And then the other place you find heavy metals are in our face powders and things like that. So bigger problem for women. But in, in July of 2018, Johnson & Johnson had to pay $4.96 billion to 22 women who found asbestos in talc in the baby powder, which caused some ovarian cancer. And then the manufacturer of a product called WEN hair product had to settle a class action lawsuit for $26 million after consumers said it caused rashes and hair loss. Um, FDA finally banned triclosan from soap in 2016 over concerns over its long-term safety and it contributed to resistance in our bacteria, creating superbugs. So when you go out shopping and you see the word natural, you figure it's probably natural. No, not when it comes to cosmetics. Natural can ca contain as many harmful ingredients as conventional. And then even unscented can contain fragrances. So you've got to learn to read the label. So these are the things that you need to look for and avoid, the ones I've listed but it's even more important that you work you know, with companies that you can trust or you start making your own. I mean, it's time consuming, but um, it's kind of like the way we have to do things these days. We have to spend more time making our own products to be safer. So the, the top ingredients to avoid, and I'll tell you why, parabens are preservatives. Um, and if there's any, Thing that says paraben in it, you need to avoid it because it mimics estrogen in your body and can lead to hormonal imbalances and even breast cancer. Artificial fragrance or perfume, almost every single skincare and cosmetic product contains artificial fragrances and they're not required to reveal, but they're known as allergens, carcinogens, endocrine disruptors, and irritants. SLS and SLES, they're in all sorts of things. They're foaming agents. So they're, um, they're in skincare, cosmetics, shampoo, and toothpaste. <laughs> and um, you might even see them as nitrosamines. So they are believed to be carcin carcinogenic. Toline. Toline is a chemical pump 
compound found in nail polish. I no longer use nail polish and hair dyes. I finally stopped dyeing my hair. They're volatile petrochemical solvents that can be toxic to your immune system and cause birth defects. Phthalates. Phthalates is a plasticizer that they actually add to your plastic bottles to keep it from getting brittle. Unfortunately, those phthalates um, are, you know, are endocrine disruptors and can cause hormonal and reproductive problems and birth defects. And then there is PEG. It's used in cosmetics as a thickener, especially in lotions, shampoo, and sunscreens. And it is contaminated with an oxide known as ethylene oxide, which is a carcinogen, and dioxane, which causes respiratory problems and is, being, and is banned in Canada. Formaldehyde, now this is scary. Formaldehyde is used as a preservative in cosmetics. Obviously, we know it's a carcinogen. It's been linked to all sorts of asthma, neurotoxicity, and developmental toxicity. And then there's oxybenzone, which is in a lot of the um, sunscreens um, and mineral fillers. So you can even find them in some of the mineral makeups. And then there's diethylamine, which is a foaming agent, and triclosan, which has been, um, which has been um, banned at least finally. Okay, so this is what I do instead. I mix oils with safer carrier oils for moisturizing. So you can't use most of these oils directly like as a skin moisturizer. So when I make my skin serum, it might have some Roman chamomile and frankincense in it, um, but then it's gonna have jojoba oil, organic jojoba oil, organic um, carrot seed oil, lots of other types of oils. I actually do add lavender to my mascara, um, and, um, and I add rosemary to a lot of our um, hair um, products because particularly for my husband whose hair is thinning. And um, I do look for lipsticks without metals and artificial coloring. I finally stopped coloring my hair. That was really big for me. And then I make Epsom salt baths, but I don't just put the oil directly in the Epsom salt. I mix my oil, whatever it is, in a carrier oil, like sesame oil, coconut oil, then I mix my Epsom salts in it, and then I put it in my bath. So here's the other big problem. I know my mom was obsessed with cleaning, and this is the only thing that I can figure out because we don't have the Alzheimer's gene. She ate really clean food, she exercised every day, but she like was obsessed with ammonia and Clorox. And so I now make, I use all essential oil-based cleaners. And I use the doTERRA On Guard Cleaner Concentrate. I don't use Windex, I replaced it with vinegar. I don't even use stainless steel cleaner anymore on my refrigerator or anything. Olive oil works really well for getting out the fingerprints and is safe. And you want all these things to be safe enough for your children or animals or grandchildren to be able to eat things off of the floor, right? So this is my little puppy over there and my nice clean floor, um, but it's not cleaned with chemicals. And then that's my counter. I have fruits and vegetables all over them. So the On Guard products, which I use, and that's a product line that doTERRA makes that I use a lot. It has wild peel, orange peel in it, clove, cinnamon, eucalyptus, and rosemary. So let's go through a little bit of the um, safety issues, dosage, and age of user. So if you're doing a dilution guide, um, there's 1% dilution, which is safe for children, elderly, pregnant women, and anybody who's chronically ill. That means five to six drops in one fluid ounce. You do have to measure these things, especially if you're making products that are gonna be put on your body. If you're making products that are put in a diffuser, you should be aware, particularly if pets and children are nearby, they can be sensitive, but it's not as critical as when you're making products for your body. Um, then there's 2% dilution. So you can use that for long-term use um, without developing sensitivities. 10 to 12 drops in about an ounce of a carrier oil. 
The 3% dilution and the 5%, these are for injuries or illness for short-term use. And I think this is where some people end up making mistakes. They do too strong a dilution for too long a time and end up with sensitivities. And so um, the dilutions are very, very important. And so I, um, and it's also based on age. Um, so the other thing is to notice if you are actually sensitive. And if you were going to test yourself to see if you're sensitive, find a place, and most people suggest the feet. You could do the feet, you could do a place on your arm um, and just you know, put a drop on the arm. You might, for testing sensitivity, you might take a drop, unless it's a citrus oil, and put it directly on your arm uh, or your foot. If the citrus oils, I always salute those because citrus oils are photosensitive. And I actually have an, an interesting story about that, that before I became, um, I think I can put me back up, I'm gonna stop sharing. Uh, is that, let's see, oops. Oh, wait a minute, why is it, did it go into that? I have to go back into sharing for some reason. Um, okay, uh, let's go, okay. So um, before I go into how to work with me, I do want to mention that I learned most of this stuff the hard way, <laughs> which is why I want to save you from learning the hard way. I put citrus oil directly on my chest once and went outside and I was uh, working an outdoor fair. And I looked down an hour or two later and noticed that it looked like I had gotten a terrible sunburn and my skin was peeling. And so that's how I learned that citrus oils were photosensitive. Now, on the other hand, in an emergency basis, I have oils with me and I was stung by a bee um, about two years ago. I was on a tennis court playing tennis. I had brought a can of coconut water, but you couldn't see into the can. I was drinking out of the can. I started to drink out of the can and noticed something very crunchy was in my mouth. I bit down. The next thing I knew, I was stung by a bee. I spit the bee out really quickly. I had a bottle of lavender, my lavender oil with me. I quickly took a drop or two of lavender and actually went in, in my mouth over the area it was stung and the swelling was down within an hour or two. So in an emergency basis, something like lavender, something like frankincense, could be used without dilution. Um, but there's a lot of other reasons to dilute because it makes your oils last longer. And I showed you how many flowers and how many things you have to do to create one bottle of oil. So why would you want to waste your oils? You do want to um, make your oils last. Um, and I think I'm just going to tell you a little bit about, I work with doTERRA. Um, there are people under me that are retail customers, some are wholesale, and then there's some people underneath me who are wellness consultants. And that means they're um, promoting, they're making this a business for themselves. And my role always with any one of these three um, groups of people is to figure out the best oils for your condition. So my role is to be in a helpful, um, a help, a helper's role. I don't charge for my consulting time when you're, like if you're buying oils and you have bought them underneath me, I make a tiny little bit of money, but, but really I'm, it's my job and my obligation to mentor anybody who I set up with an account for doTERRA oils underneath me. Um, and as I said, I do use other reputable companies and do lots of training. So I do just want to show you, if you decide you wanted to work with me, doTERRA, you um, could do this through my website. Um, it would just click right to my website um, on essential oils. And um, there it is. And then book a consultation, shop doTERRA. I would work with you on that. And then... Um, back to the slideshow, but I get a lot of my information from this group, Aromatics International. And really, if you're a do-it-yourselfer <laughs> and just want to go out, this, they're a reputable company and they have this thing called Learn. 
and they have a beginner's guide, a sustainability guide, natural cleaning, aroma numbers. I mean, they're amazing. Um, and um, I have taken, they, they, they have some courses you can pay for, and then they have some free things. And then once you get on their newsletter list, you get amazing recipes all the time. Um, they're always sharing stuff. So again, if you like to do things on your own, this is, they're great. They are just great. And you don't have to come under me or do anything like that to be able to, um, to get their information. So let me go back to my slideshow and... Um, and then these are the other things I do. I, I work with people on yoga, nutritional advice, essential oils, the right supplements, and I also do detoxing. And now I want to stop the share and stop the recording and entertain your questions. So I went through it pretty fast.